Hello, this is Reverend Craig Omarotema, reaching you from Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria, bringing you words of hope and power to enforce your victory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This morning, I'm speaking on the title, He Looked for a City. He looked for a city. Hallelujah. I'm going to say certain things this morning that are unpopular. But they are true. They're unpopular. They may be offensive. But it's the truth. Let me begin by saying that by the constitution of this country, you have a right to protest peacefully. So I am not against protests. But there's a way we fight our battles. And it's different from that of the world. So what I present to you this morning is a kingdom perspective. Not just a perspective, the kingdom position. Several people we're asking during the, the two weeks protest or even more than that, what's the position of the church? Why are pastors not speaking? And then pastors broke under the pressure and began to speak. Of course I didn't. Again, let me state that I totally am against any form of brutality, any form of oppression. The kingdom where we hail from does not live by such standards and we denounce it, yes, but there's a way we fight our battle. Yes, Let me also state that this does not reflect a lack of empathy on my part for those who have suffered one form of abuse or another, for those who lost their lives and for their families who are grieving. As a matter of fact, as the protests went on and became violent when the, when the peaceful protesters were being attacked, specifically here in Benin, because this is my state, I sent over 100,000 to treat the injured in the hospital. So no one should say or can say that I do not feel the plight of the common man, but we are not common men. Yes, Protests can only go so far from the history of this nation and nations around the world. In 2011, thereabout, we had what we call the Arab Spring. Many of you will remember Libya, Syria, several Arab nations rose up to begin to protest against the wickedness of their leaders. And the whole world hailed it as the revolution, the change. 
that this world, this century, was about to witness. This is 2020. I ask you, where are those nations today? Syria is still at war. Libya is in rubble. It got so bad in Libya, they began to sell human beings. Specifically Nigerians who were trying to cross. Look around. Where was the revolution in Egypt? On the 15th of July, 2016, there was a, a coup attempt in Turkey. Some segments of the military arose to overthrow the government of President Erdogan. The nation as a whole rose up and withstood the defecting army. Several of them lost their lives. The world hailed it as patriotism on the part of that nation to protect its democracy until, and they withstood the military until they backed down. Seemingly, peace was restored, democracy saved. And then the president began a crackdown on what he termed coup plotters. Over a thousand, over a hundred thousand people have been locked up. All his perceived enemies, all in the opposition, several of them locked up, whether they participated in it or not. And then he began to introduce sweeping reforms. These things are there. You can browse on them, listen on the news. Up until now, introducing sweeping reforms in all the facets of leadership, of government, all the different arms, up to the Senate. And part of the resolution he's introducing is such that the Senate will be more like an advisory council, no powers. And anybody that speaks against it right now, they'll catch them and say, this is one of the coup plotters. So now the people of Turkey are asking themselves, what did we fight for? Is this what we fought for? I said all of this to say that protests don't always guarantee the change we desire. Sadly so. When this protest started, amazingly, several people thought, well, this is the first of its kind. Let me tell you why this was different. It's because of social media. We have had protests in this nation. If you are old enough, you know. From when MKO Abiola's victory at the pools was annulled, there were protests. I remember as a child, growing up in this city, I remember the chants of Babangida must go. Where are we today? So if anybody genuinely thought that this will bring the lasting change, you are wrong, as you have seen. For several factors, number one, and the key of them is human nature. What did I say? Human nature. Human nature. This is the time of the youths. The youths have staged a revolution that's going to change this nation. The people that toppled this revolution were youths. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
while youths were protesting peacefully on the streets, it was fellow youths that took up arms against them. Innocent protesters lost their lives. It is human nature. And if anybody genuinely thought that street protests can overpower the wickedness of human nature, I'm sorry to disappoint you. You're wrong. So when some of us refuse to speak, this is the reason. Because we saw where this was going. The massacre at Lekki Tollgate has been denied by the whole leadership of this nation. Human nature. This is the reason why God put us here. Because it is only the church that has the answer. And listen, the church cannot become an agent to drive social change. That's not what we are called to do. Social change is a consequence of enforcing the gospel and its power in this nation and everywhere else. Nations where they have value for human life. Check their history. It started with a gospel revolution. And to date, every nation that has veered away from Judeo-Christian values have experienced a nosedive in the morality of that nation. You praise the Western world. You want to be like them. If you know their problems, you are not ready for it. And whether you like it or not, majority of what happens in America influences this nation yes, and the nations of the earth. Yes, I was surprised to see that CNN carried the protests. It's because it serves their favor. Yes, it serves their interest. Yes, there have been killings in northern Nigeria, yes, southern Kaduna, yes, Jos, Zamfara. I watched the video on channels a few days ago. A lady was protesting, crying, that every day they bury at least 30 people, in, 30 bodies in Zamfara. This has been happening for years. We have Northern Brethren. Some of them are here, some of them are over there. The genocide happening in those places, CNN is aware. They have never reported it. Because it serves their interest against Donald Trump. A few months ago, there was a protest against police brutality in the U.S. That's the reason CNN reported it. Because there is so much more happening that they have refused to report. So if you think CNN is on your side, if you think the West is on your side, you are mistaken. I said to a few people who cared to ask me my position on this matter, and I told them, I said, listen, the protest will start. If they think that the West will come to their aid, they are joking. The West only comes to your aid if it has, if it has interest, if it has something to gain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They tried to infiltrate Syria because there's oil there, and it was the Obama-led regime in America that invaded, that you know, stirred them up against their president. Whatever their issues are, that's not my business. I'm talking about that's not my concern now. I'm talking about I'm following a certain plot. So follow me. When that happened, Syria called to Russia. Because by law, by international law, a country can come in to intervene on behalf of another country if it calls on it and says, I am at war and I need your help. So the US was sending weapons 
military-grade weapons to the protesters to topple the regime of Assad so they could come in. And then Assad called, President Assad called on Russia. So Putin came in. And then it was a fight now between Russia and the US for supremacy. The US already had several wars it was still fighting and knew it could not enter Syria full-fledged. Russia has hardly any war apart from Ukraine, which is hardly even a war. So they entered with their full might. And the new US knew, if we enter this land to fight, we will lose so much. So they backed out. And they left the rebels to themselves. I still remember watching on TV and the rebels were crying. The US has failed us. They have disappointed us. If you are depending on the West, you are mistaken. I saw it on social media. If we can protest straight for 31 days, UN will answer. UN was never going to answer. Do you know how much they have on their table? Do you know how much they have on their table? They prioritize. And it has to be something that can serve their interests. They have to be, be able to benefit something. So I have given you all of this, I put all of this on the table to help you see that it is a hopeless case. So what is the solution? He looked for a city. Listen, the church of Christ must never be reactionary. Never. When the church relinquishes its role of being the agent of change and becomes the one begging for change, then it becomes a victim of the system. But we are not victims. We are more than conquerors. Listen, I've not trained you to be one of the helpless masses. That's not how I trained you. I've trained you to be the answer to their complaint. Who are you? Do you know who you are? John chapter 8. From verse 20. John 8, 20. John 15 from verse 18. I want us to be as quick as possible. These words speak Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Now, people have used that to say, you cannot die unless your hour has come. Listen, this wasn't just about Jesus dying. God has not set an hour where anybody will die. The hour here was the hour for him to die for the world and rise again. It wasn't the hour of his death. So there's no hour that God has said that you must die. With long life, I will satisfy you. Until you are satisfied, you are going nowhere. Next verse. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way and ye shall seek me and ye shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. He was talking to the Jews. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself because he said, Whither I go, ye cannot come. Next verse. Watch this. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. Listen, this is not escapism. We're not trying to escape from the problems of this world and say, Well, this world is not my home. Literally, this world is not our home. We are not of this world like Jesus is. And I'll show it to you in a moment. 24. And I said, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Notice how Jesus is, Jesus is concerned about their spiritual state. Yes, sir. All right. Chapter 15, verse 18. 18 and 19. John 15. John 15, 18 and 19. Hallelujah. And then you go to John 16. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. Verse 19. If ye were of the world, you see, he's talking to you now. The world will love his own, but because ye are not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. Did you see that? I have chosen you out of the world. How could Christians forget that? How could we forget that? How could we forget that? How can we cry? 
as though we are helpless, as though we are victims. We are not victims. We are not victims. Listen, there is no amount of protest, there is no amount of agitation that can remove the wickedness of man. No amount of it. So you better hold on to your victory in Christ because that is the answer. That is the answer. Chapter 16. You are not of this world. Verse 17. Chapter 16, verse 17. Watch how Jesus settles you. This is your day of joy. Say, this is my day of joy. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, what is, what is this that he said unto us? A little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father. So Jesus had told them, look, a little while you will not see me. That's when he died. And then a little while you see me when he resurrects. Watch this. They said, therefore, what is this that he said a little while? And we cannot tell what he said. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of what I, say, of what I said? A little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, had sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembered, remembered no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into this world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice. And your joy, no man take it from you. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. What day is he talking about? The day when he is raised up. He says that joy that comes by the resurrection of Jesus, no man can take from you. No government can take from you. No system can take from you. Then he says in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall demand, that's what it means, the Father, of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He that you about nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. This is your day of joy. Yes, he says, in that day, that day has come because he has been raised up. So the answer is the resurrection of Jesus. We are going somewhere, follow this. Yes, Chapter 16, verse 33. Just jump verse 33. Verse 33. These things have spoken unto you that in me, in who? In me, that's in Jesus, ye might have peace. That's where your peace lies. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. How can people think that this world will get better? Jesus has told you in prophecy, you will have tribulation. There is no nation of the world that has it going easy. No nation. No nation. No nation. I visit the UK a lot. Many of them are frustrated to the point of, of, of depression. Is it, does it not shock you that in the West, the rate of depression is higher? Way higher. I still remember a few years ago when, 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 when people began to commit suicide here. We were shocked. Come on. We were shocked. Suicide. Tell him he killed himself. And then somebody said, I'd rather kill myself than commit suicide. <laughs> we were shocked, and we still are. As bad as we claim that things are in this nation, we are, we are horrified that somebody will kill himself. Over there where everything is fine, they take their lives easily. What we endure, and let me tell you, Nigeria has a prophetic destiny in God. This is where I had a problem with pastors and believers who voiced frustration in these times. Do you know who you are? Do you know what you carry? I'll show you something in a moment. I'll show you something in a moment. They're killing themselves. What we can endure as a nation, as a people, all right? Oh, come on. It is a toughness that God has given the Nigerian. Things will not always be like this. And I will show you where the change will come from. 
In the world, it would have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amplified version says, I have robbed it of power to harm you. You are not a victim of the system. We represent a kingdom. We represent a kingdom. John 18, verse 36. John 18, 36, and then 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. That means there's a way kingdom people fight. He says if it was from this world, my people would have fought. Jesus just gave a definite statement about what the kingdoms of men do. They fight. But my kingdom is not of this world. In other words, my people don't fight. There is a way we win. There's a way we win. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm it may look like a home. This is how, this is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah, yeah. Second Corinthians 5.20. Second Corinthians 5.20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Hallelujah. We are ambassadors. Listen, we represent a kingdom. Yes, sir. Kaya. We represent a kingdom. We are not ordinary people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Never lose sight of that yes, and think and sound like men. Yes, we are ambassadors of Christ. Ambassador. We are ambassadors of a kingdom. Hallelujah. We are not victims. This system is not what powers us. Listen, the ambassador of England to Nigeria is not paid in Naira. He's paid in pounds. It is that. So listen, the economy of Nigeria could be in shambles. The ambassador does not feel this economy. Why? Because he is powered from his nation. That's why we can be here and not be victims of the system. Because we are powered by heaven's economy. When we set up the former building and put the roof, it was in, t in the time of deep recession. That period, people were going to the ATM and money couldn't come out. You had money in the bank, but there was no cash. We took that place down in one year. During the lockdown, we got this place up supernaturally because we are not dependent on any human system during the lockdown we dedicated at least six cars got a church bus worth six million built this place up and finished it from before camp meeting come on we are ambassadors of Christ we are not victims I've told you, you don't talk like that with the common man, with the common man. You are not a common man. <laughs> Hebrews 11. Now, listen, let me tell you, you see, let me tell you, you know, when, let me tell you this. <laughs> when pastors get under pressure to become social uh, what do you call it? Activists. Look, I'm not an activist. I am, I am not an activist. I am not an activist. I am an apostle of the Most High God. A preacher and a teacher of this gospel. That's what I'm called to do. And listen, it is by this gospel that we take communities. And what we are being activists for, the gospel will bring it lasting. 
let me tell you, look. And I have already received wisdom from the Spirit downloaded on what to do. Because let me tell you, as it is right now, there's a stalemate. Nobody has won. The youths did not win. The police did not win. The stalemate. Stalemate. Everybody was touched. Everybody was affected. Policemen died. They were killed. Burned to ashes. Even the police came out protesting. Stop killing police. Now police is saying stop killing police. So suddenly life matters. Now police is coming out saying stop killing police. So let me tell you. With this protest, nothing much has been achieved. You know why? There's bad blood between police and youth. Yes, sir. Now, everywhere is volatile. Because even the policemen, now, as they are going on patrol, they are looking back. So there is no trust in our communities. Who do you think has won? We are taking that fight back from the devil and we are winning it with the gospel. Yes. In the coming weeks, I'll tell you what has been downloaded in my spirit as the answer, and it is lasting. It is lasting. I got it in prayer. I received rema in prayer. We are the answer, and this will demonstrate to you that we are the answer. Let me tell you one of the reasons why I'm hard like this, why I'm this firm, because I saw Christians Insulting pastors for not talking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Christians. One of them carried a placard into her church on a Sunday morning. Yes, that the church should close the service and follow her to go and, go and protest. What madness. And then some people were sharing. If you are as if you are if as a if as a Christian, you were waiting for your pastor to talk before you talk, then you are worshiping an idol. You are a joke. Let me tell you, this thing, this problem of you know when pastors break under this pressure to be social activists. I won't fall for that thing. I made up my mind. Do you know that severally, Jesus was being dragged into this thing? Luke 13, let me show you. Luke 13 verse 1. Let me tell you why. I cannot fall for this thing. We know what the answer is. Now, I hope you remember where I started from. I supported protesters because it is their constitutional right. By law in this country, you have a right to protest peacefully. I'm just saying to you, that by kingdom, kingdom lenses, it doesn't go too far. It doesn't go too far. It doesn't go too far. I saw elders encouraging the youth. I saw pastors encouraging the youth as if they were not youths and they did not protest before. Shuwari wanted to join the protest in Abuja. They drove him away. Go, go, go. We don't want you. We don't want you. Uh, 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 it's supposed to be everybody's struggle. That man protested in his early 20s. Yes, sir. When, when uh, during the MKO Abiola days. Go and watch the videos they are there. And he was saying it with the youth. The elders here know. Somebody said that my mother told me not to go. I, I told her you are a coward. Oga, listen. Before you start insulting your mother, <laughs> it's not protest your mother did. They fought Biafra. Yes, 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 hey, let us just go to war. Do you know war? Do you know what war is? Okay. Just this small thing that happened. They opened two prisons. Bought a few places. Everybody is afraid now. Do you know war? Do you know what war is? Let me tell you what happened. There was answers in Jesus' day. Let me tell you. Because, listen, any change, let me tell you this, let me tell you this, let me tell you this, again, like I said, people have a right to protest, and I am not against it. I'm just telling you, right, that if you want lasting change, it is this gospel. It's the stark reality. 
And this is church I must talk. Because we are the people of God. We are the people of God. And let me tell you this. Sometimes some of those protests, yes, I have no problem. All right? If believers are part of it, and do you understand this? It's constitutionally correct. Get my point. Do you understand this? But well, we can't depend on only that. We have people here, wonderful people who were part of the protests. Every step of the way, as I was talking with some of them, all right? And, you know, I supported, I supported the cause because we're against any form of injustice. Are you following this? And we sure did make a statement. We sure did make a statement. I'm just saying to you that it cannot bring the lasting change. So you don't do that and rest. I'm telling you what works. Permanently. You say, have we not been preaching since? Have we not been praying? I just don't be praying. No, we have not been preaching gospel. What we have preached is religion. Let this gospel spread in this nation. You know it. Many of you came here when you heard the gospel. You say, Kai, it's as if I've not been to church before. Let this gospel become the message around the nations and see what happens. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. These Galileans, when you check them in their history, they were people who were pr protested against, against Roman oppression because Israel, the Israelites were slaves under the Romans. And the Romans were brutal. So they they, they to enter hashtag end Roman oppression. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when these guys protested once, and then they now went to the temple to go and offer sacrifices and worship their God. Pilate came with soldiers, killed them in the temple, and mingled their blood with the sacrifices they were offering. That was what happened in Lekio. Yes, that one they had to off light yes, and shoot. This one, broad daylight, koro koro. Kill them, kill them, kill them, drain their blood, drain their blood. That was it, they don't. We're supposed to get two buckets from that one. They mingled their blood with the sacrifices they were offering. Watch this. Then the social critics came to pastor. Do, do verse 1 again. They were present at that season, some that told him, they came to tell Jesus what Pilate did. Did you see that? Next verse. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans, Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. Next verse. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Haba. Haba. Sir, we are saying you should say something about what, is, what Pilate did. Talk against this oppression. Lend your voice. God said, um, Jesus said, uh-uh, except you repent, you will likewise perish. Now, that likewise perish was on that Pilate will also mingle your blood. He was talking about it, their eternal destination. If you do not repent, you will go to hell. That means, listen, you can change this country all you want. All the systems change. Everything is now fine. Everybody is now a millionaire. Listen, it would have amounted to nothing if people don't get born again. Because this system will be crashed. This world will come to an end. We will all have to stand before God. Verse 4. Or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them. So there was a tower that was built, all right? And the tower fell. So this is bad government. Even the government building that they built is not, is not good because the politicians have eaten it and they use low standard material. Those politicians need to be brought to book. The wall fell on them. Why didn't Jesus carry protest? Take his 12 disciples. And go and meet Pilate. Hashtag stop religious oppression. How can you mingle blood with people, who, the blood of people who are worshiping in the temple? Why didn't Jesus do that? Listen, people can do that. Don't drag pastors into it. Don't drag us into it. Don't drag us into it. Do you understand the call of God upon our lives? Do you understand what we are called to do? Listen, any change that does not stem from the church cannot end up in the church. That means you say, change, 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 change. Listen, if this thing is not inspired by the gospel, it can never produce revival. Never. Oh, this is a revival, this is a revival. Oh, Allah. 
Then some may have been thinking that, oh, those people, they were bad people. That's why they died. Jesus said, you think, you think they were the worst sinners in Israel? He says, you too, if you don't repent, you will likewise perish. Those who lost their lives, you think we are better than them? You think we are smarter than them? I, I just see them. I just dodge. See, because now, even though you are protesting, you have to use sense. You think it's your smartness. You think it's your smartness. You think it's your smartness. Malik is here. I saw him. We were talking all through the period, all through the period of the protest. Everything he was doing, we were talking every day. Saw him carry dead bodies. You think, you think, you think, you think it was because of the smartness? I saw him break down in tears. Full-fledged man. You think it's because you were smart? He's here, and there were several others here who joined the protest. But for the mercy of God, it could have been anybody. It could have been anybody. Human nature. I, I, I expected that everybody, every well think, every well meaning person, every, do you understand this? Yes, Including the youth. I said that you were, are you serious? You were attacking, you were attacking peaceful protesters. Who were they fighting for? Yes, hey! The hopelessness of humanity without Christ. Without Christ. Chapter 2, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. <laughs> you know, somebody met Jesus. Now, if you read from verse 1, I don't have the time. If you read from verse 1 down, some, Jesus was talking spiritual things. Now, you know, when, when, they, when, they, when they bring you before kings, and he said, don't worry about what you would think. The Holy Spirit will give you. He was talking spirituality. As he was talking in verse 13, somebody came to him, Master! Now that I, so now I know you are, you are a man of God, you are a pastor, so you believe in justice. Tell my brother to divide the property with, with me, to share the inheritance with me. Jesus looked at him. You see how they kept trying to drag Jesus into social issues. Jesus looked at him and said, who made me ruler over you? Who? Judge or ruler, who? My, my, my question is simple. Come on. I expected Jesus to at least just condemn the matter. Ah, uh -uh, senior brother, you help your younger brother. Why are you behaving like that? Share the property. Wouldn't that sound wonderful? Yes. Why would Jesus always dodge it? Why? Master, Pilate has killed people, mingle with their blood, except you repent. He will likewise perish. Sir, can you just condemn Pilate? Can you just condemn Pilate? I say, except you repent, you will likewise perish. I'm just being like Jesus. Let me tell you one of the major reasons why Jesus will not comment on things like that. is because many times, behind that seeming fight for justice is an underlying evil. Because the next line, Jesus said, said to them, beware of covetousness. That means the reason why he was going for that property, the inheritance, is because there was covetousness in his heart. So, God, so Jesus is saying, I will not raise one evil above another. Evil is evil, sin is sin. Some of the people protesting are Yahoo boys. Yes, sir. Who don't want police to disturb them again so that they can continue to wreck establishment and families and all of that? Does, does, now, now, from your understanding of the scriptures, which sin is bigger than the other? So many times, at the fight for one, justice, justice, justice. It's an underlying evil somewhere, whether you like it or not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And maybe you don't realize the bad image that that thing gives us outside. You see, you're in Nigeria. That is the reason why many of those nations have shut their doors against young people of this country, of this nation, Nigeria. Before you can, till now, before you can say you want to go to the UK or go to the US or whatever, you have to be married. You have, and you, you have to be at a certain age. You can't just, young people just get up and go to the embassy and say you want to go and get No, they don't give again. Mm, they don't give again. Are you following what I'm saying? So, it is usually that there is one evil, all right, on the line, somewhere, that wants to continue, but it has to use the face of seeking justice. Yes. I told you some of the things I would say, they are controversial, they are not popular, but it is the truth, and I'll say it. Yes, sir. Let's, let's tie this thing up. Hebrews 11. I have just one, two, 
three scriptures to read to you. And then we're done. Hebrews 11 verse 8. Hebrews 11 verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, listen, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. <laughs> Next verse. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Watch this. He, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. He didn't know where he was going, but he entered the land of promise and stayed there like a stranger. Watch this. Next verse. For he looked for a city. He was already in the land that was promised him. So what city was he looking for? You didn't get the question. Verse 9. Verse 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. So he was already there. The land of Canaan. As in a strange, as in a strange country. He was, he was living there as though he was a foreigner in that country. That's what he's saying. Dwelling in tabernacles, that's in tents. So he didn't build house, proper house. He was dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. So he was already in that land, living like a stranger. Next verse. For he looked for his city. Which city? God already promised you. I will give you this land. You enter the land, God said this is the land. You now dwell there as a stranger because you are looking for a city. What are you looking for again when you have already entered the city? Uh, yes, sir. Do you understand my... Yes, see, sir. I'm not telling you to answer the question. Do you understand the question first? Yes, sir. Okay, good. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That means in that physical land of promise, he was looking for another city that was spiritual. You are living in Nigeria, but you should be looking for another city. You live in Benin, but you should be looking for another city. What city is he talking about? What city is he talking about? What city is he talking about? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to Jesus. Ah. Uh, you know, when we cry out to God, you know what God gives us? God gives us kingdom. Listen, I said I didn't have the time to read it. And I, I'm not doing that. You read it for yourself. In Luke chapter 12, don't go there. After Jesus rebuked that guy for being covetous, when he said, share the property yes, between sir. me and my brother. Yes, sir. He went down and began to, then he gave the parable of the rich fool who had plenty and all of that. Yes, then he said, a man's life does not consist of the abundance of possessions that he has. Then he went further to say, do not worry what you will drink, what you will eat. Then he said, be of good cheer. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That is the city. So when you are crying out for things, oh, this one, this one, what God wants to give you is a city. By a city, I mean he wants to give you a system of oppression that comes from heaven. A system that superimposes on this system. In other words, we will be living here, but with a different set of rules and producing different kinds of results. So we will be, that's what made Abraham tick and unique. That Abraham was in that land, yet he was different. Abraham was in that land. In the midst of famine, Abraham was prospering. In the midst of famine, Isaac was prospering. Yes, Am I talking here? Yes, Why? Because they were carrying a kingdom mandate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What city was he looking for? Genesis chapter 12. This is second scripture. I told you three scriptures. Genesis 12. Let's see what, what God told him. Because God told him, leave your father's house. Leave to a land that I will show you. From verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Unto a land that I will show thee. <laughs> Next verse. And I will make of thee a great nation. Ah, uh -uh, I don't get it. Go to a land that I will show you. That land was already a nation. But he said to him, I will make of you a nation. So, a nation in a nation. Come on now. Uh, yes, 
I am going to make a nation in an already existing nation. Let me tell you this. The way of the kingdom is to swallow up kingdoms. The way of this kingdom is not to join the king, is not to join the land, the people of the land, and then be trying to talk to them. You know, uh, you know, we are all we are all part of the struggle. Everybody, we are all part of the struggle. We are all hustling. We are all part of the struggle. No, and see what he will do. Not just will he make him a great nation. He says, "I will make thee a great nation. I will make a, make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing." So watch this. First of all, I will make you a nation in the nation. Then as a nation, I will bless you in that nation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. So this is the nation. So this, oh, this, this podium here is the nation. All right? To a land that I will show you. So now Abraham has come into that land of promise. He's there. While he's in there, God is making him a nation, great nation inside this nation. Then God says to him, I will bless you. I will make your name great. Then you will bless the nation. So this is the purpose of God. To bless you. Make your name great. Make you a nation in the nation. And then you will change the nation. Let me tell you. Nobody has ever brought change without influence. And when I say influence, I mean superior influence. Nobody. Why do you think that the nations of the world are all, you know, trying to gather, trying to get, you know, everybody wants to go nuclear? Because it gives you influence. It gives you voice. You must have superior power. If you must talk, in the nations of the earth, amongst the nations, in the committee of nations and be heard. You must have something that they have. What, you must have what they have or what they don't have. That's why North Korea said, we die on top of producing this thing. Don't tell us we cannot produce nuclear power. Because we want to be a voice. That's why Iran wants to produce nuclear weapons. Because they want to be a voice in the Middle East. They were a small nation one time, and Iraq invaded them. It took the intervention of the U.S. to help them in the time of Adam, Saddam Hussein. Invaded Iran. So they say, uh-uh, we need influence. You cannot make impact without influence. That's why God says, I will make of you a great nation. And Abraham was literally that. Because he got to a point, the Bible says that Abimelech and his people came and met Abraham. A nation came to Abraham and said, let us make a covenant with you. That you, you, will not do us any harm. And we too will not attack you. How could a nation be afraid of one man? One man. One man. If not the supernatural hand of God. And I'm telling you, listen, what God has in store for you is bigger than what any protest can achieve. Listen, we say enter, even if they end the SARS and they reform the police, that's the beginning. The, the problems are many. You don't even know where to start from. Because if you look at it, even the police, they are victims of the system. Yes, sir. Go and look at their barracks. Go and look at where they, are, where they are living. When you treat them like animals, how do you think they will treat the people that they are supposed to protect? So you find out that even the police need our love. Because they are part of the system. They are part of the failed system. They are part of the field system. And let me tell you, much of what, what people did not understand is that as you were shouting, Ensal, understand that this is a community on its own. The police are a community on its own, on their own. When you are shouting, Ensal, what the police is hearing is end police. That people of influence want to take our daily bread from our mouth because many of them, their salaries cannot, cannot take them anywhere. Many of them end their livelihood from the streets. I thought that even with the protests, this thing would be over. I just landed from the UK this morning from international airports to local airports, police and soldiers, bros, what do you have for us? <laughs> Today! I thought that the protest would change things. This morning, between international airport to the local airport, I was shocked to see even a soldier. Bros, what did you bring for the, for the boys? I looked at the soldier again. Ha! Soldier! If 
you think this thing will change? Listen, because you are, what are you telling them? Where do you want, how do you want them to survive? How do you want them to survive? No, ask, ask, how do you want them to survive? I was driving once. As I was driving, you know, so, you know, I, you know, so they stopped me. Policemen were very, 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 you know, so I brought out all my documents. I, made sure, I always make sure everything is complete with me. So I brought out everything, everything. And then after, one of them said, bro, I beg, not be all this one with the talk. Not be this one with the talk. Not be this one with the talk. Yeah, we don't, we don't, now here, now here we tell they survive. Now here we tell they, our God don't tell us, he don't give us how much we will. We they will give them, they are marketers. They give them targets. Their bosses give them targets what to get. They will threaten them, if you don't bring this, I will sack you. How do you think they will be when they are on the streets? Because they must hit their target. They too are victims of the system. So if we turn against them, listen, they will just look and say, okay, eh, this boy, they want, to, they want to take our daily bread from us and they will get more brutal. They too are victims of the system. It will take a brave person to be able to stand and look and say, even the police need help. Are you still here? That's why God wants to make you great. Listen, this has nothing to do with the government. What I'm telling you now has nothing to do with the government. It has all to do with you being blessed, being great, and then you become the... That's what God told Abraham when he said, you will lend to nations. You, one man. That's the destiny of God for you. It's bigger than any change you can come up for. It's bigger than any change. Listen, the NSAS protest is just trying to, you know, just patch something. It's patching. It's not, it's not, it can't do anything major. It's patching. It's patching. We are patching. We're just patching things. Yeah, and that's why some of the protesters now say, no, 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 it's not just NSAS. It is N bad government, governance. It is this. They start listening to that thing because there are many. There are many. There are many. See how much the senators are earning. And those in the House of Reps, you think they're about to give that up easy? Do you know how much they fought, how much they paid to get there? Do you know how much it, how much it takes to buy form to become a governor of a state? Do you know how much? By the time you have paid, listen, until politics becomes unattractive for money, <laughs> oh, yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Now, listen. Hate Donald Trump, love Donald Trump. I will tell you a few things that are true. Take it or leave it. One of the reasons why he is as bold as he is and he does anything he wants to do is because he did not profit from the system. Hi. I still remember when he was contesting, when he first came out to contest. He said, Look, and that was one of the things that one of the things that sold with the American populace. He hates him. I don't like the way he talks. You can't take anything away from that man. And as it is, the guy is cruising his way to second term. Listen, you may hate it, you may not like it, but I'm telling you, watch and see. I'm not. I'm not. I don't say. I'm not prophesying. I thought here the Lord, but I'm not prophesying here. I'm just talking. When he first came out, he said, "Listen, I'm a billionaire." I'm rich. I don't need their money. I don't need their money. So they can't control me. The moment the U.S. head down, ah, it's true. We need somebody that these, these politicians cannot. Did you watch? I look, I watched, the, I watched the two debates. The second debate, there was a statement he made. He said, listen, he said, you see, I'm not like this politician. This is how these politicians talk. This is the president. He said, I am not a politician. How can a president say I'm not a politician? How? How, sir? How? Are you a president? You say you are not a politician. <laughs> Joe Biden has been in the system for 47 years. Yes, sir. 47 years. Human nature. You, you think it's only in Nigeria. They say, when we were children, we were hearing, uh, we are still here, but it is happening in the U.S. It's happening everywhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And frankly, let me tell you, this young generation is not ready to take leadership. What we saw in the protest is clear indication yes, sir. Yes, sir. that we are, not, we are not ready. We are not ready. 
We're not ready. Let me tell you, you can set up you, new youth party. <laughs> you new youth democratic party of Nigeria. Let me tell you, the average Nigerian youth is looking for how to get to power. Yes, sir. So that he can eat a part of a national cake. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know why you fight when your person is in power? Yes, he must win. Why? Because you know what it will benefit you. It is inside. It's the system. But we are detaching ourselves from that system. Because we are bigger than the system. He makes us a great nation. Blesses us. Gives us a big name. And then we become a blessing to the nation. Until you have that dimension of dominion and power. And influence. You can't change things. You can't change things. You can't change things. God was going to make Abraham a great nation in an already existing nation. Listen, so Abraham was not looking for the land to favor him, like many Nigerians do. Abraham was looking for something to come out of him to bless the land. Because God said to, so said to him, in you, in you, shall all nations of the world be blessed. In you! In you. And that is Christ. Last scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Abraham was looking for, the, this was the city Abraham was looking for. He was actually looking for a system of kingdom operations. A different set of rules from what obtained where he was. That would set him apart from the rest. That scripture, when it says that he was looking for a kingdom, the literal Hebrew translation says he was receiving a kingdom. He was receiving a kingdom. So we stand here and we receive the kingdom. That's what Jesus said, teaching, teaching his disciples to pray. Thy kingdom come. That means God put us here to receive kingdom, to bring kingdom here. Oh, come on now. It was much like what the Greeks did in the time of Alexander the Great. Any nation they conquered, Alexander the Great, Great would send his philosophers into that land. They would start teaching the people the customs and the language of the Greeks. What are they doing? They are receiving a kingdom and imposing it here. So it now happened that Greek, the Greek language became the lingua franca. Everybody spoke Greek. Uh, Greek. Are you following what I'm saying? So that even when the Romans took over from the Greeks, they were still speaking Greek. Why? Because one of them was just looking for dominance, dominance, dominance. Somebody else was looking to implant kingdom. That's who you are. Hebrews 12, last scripture, 25. 25 to 29. Hebrews 12, last scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 12, 25. See that ye refuse him not that speaketh, for they escape not who refuse him that speak on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. That's about Jesus. Don't reject Jesus. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now had promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. All the systems of this world will shake. Yes, sir. What happened here in Nigeria was a shaking of systems. And it's happening all over the nations of the earth, and it will keep happening. Why? The moment they think they've stable, stabilized everything, yes, we have had it. God will shake things up, and then they will realize, ah, ah, what's happening? I thought we had it all covered. I thought we had it all covered. And every time he shakes the earth and the heavens, it is to give the church advantage. That's why the church cannot afford, cannot afford to be victims. We can't be talking like victims. All sorts of messages were preached. Principles on, on how to do protests and win protests. Oh, We're about to cross the, the Red Sea now. Let the youths go in front. We, the elders, are backing you up. Let the youths be in front as you begin to push, as you begin to push. Don't interpret Bible like that. It's bad behavior. Okay. After the shot now, protest ended. We're now changing mouth. Well, let us be peaceful. It is well, we commiserate with all those who lost their lives. Sir, that cannot bring them back home. 
Nobody says that protest is for the youth. Everybody, everybody, are you following what I'm saying? Everybody, and we're not victims, but do you understand what I'm saying? This thing has affected everybody, so don't tell me it's only the youth. Everybody is cock back. Let the youth go forward. The future is in your hands. Go and protest. Go and protest. Go and protest. Go and protest. You have to take this future in your hands. Oh God, why did you not take it in your hands? Did you fall from heaven and adult? What is good for the goose is good for the gander. All of us can come out. Everybody can. If, if all the elders had come out, too, the, the crowd would have been more. Probably they would have heard us. One term is only for the youth. Many of you elders, when this thing was happening, you were like this. I pray, sir. It will be good. I'm really happy that the youth have found their voice. But I pray. The moment the shooting started, I knew. I knew. You knew. You knew. Like I said, what I'm saying is not popular, but it's the truth. It may sound offensive, but it's the truth. We know what works. So all those Christians that were opening their mouths and talking anyhow. Wow, pastor's quiet. When we call for evangelism, shameless you. We not come for evangelism. Every time we call for emergency, less than, what, what are you talking? You have never aggressively pushed this gospel. That means you, you don't believe in the power of this gospel. You can end SARS, but you cannot preach gospel. I have marked all of you. <laughs> we are going on evangelism next week. I have marked all of you. match with us. We move. Listen, I'm not making light of the sufferings of people. Get this. I'm telling you, we have what works. Let us push it. And nobody should feel embarrassed for going on the streets. All right? What I'm saying is that that is not enough. Yes, sir. That's not enough. That's not enough, one. Number two, the only reason you are this disappointed is because you had so much faith in that, in that system. Yes, sir. And that's why you're so discouraged now. Yes, sir. But your faith should never have been there. Wow. Yes, sir. Your faith should never have been there. Yes, sir. Such that if it fails, you know what works. So watch this. He's shaking heaven and earth. Next verse. Come on now. And this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaken. As for things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Next verse. Wherefore, we receiving the kingdom which cannot be moved. You see that? That's what Abraham did. Abraham, when he says Abraham was looking for a kingdom, he says Abraham was receiving a kingdom. We too are receiving a kingdom. He says that kingdom cannot be shaken. That kingdom cannot be moved. Let us have grace. One translation says, let us be thankful, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Verse 29 says, for our God is a consuming fire. I don't know how they have used that to threaten Christians. How can he say all these beautiful things about you and then at the end say, I will consume you? It's a consuming fire. He doesn't consume his own. Hallelujah. Do these verses again for me from the Passion Translation. Verse 25 to 29. Make sure that you never refuse to listen to God when he speaks for God who spoke on earth from, the, from Sinai is the same God who now speaks from heaven. Those who heard him speak his living word on earth found nowhere to hide. So what chance is there for us to escape if we turn our backs on God and refuse to hear his warnings as he speaks from heaven? That's about Jesus. 
The earth was rocked at the sound of his voice from the mountain. But now he had promised once and for all, I will not only shake the systems of the world, but also the unseen powers of the heavenly realm. That means he will deal with it. That means he will frustrate demonic activities. And then he will shake up earthly systems. Because these things are inspired by demons. The wickedness of these rulers are inspired by demons. Protests cannot drive away demons. But whatsoever we bind on earth. Haya. We must be more conscious of our spiritual authority. No, do that again. Once and for all, I will not only shake the systems of the, of the world, but also the unseen powers of the heavenly realm. The moment the church steps out with kingdom mandates, God will start shaking up systems, shaking up systems. Then when they are shaking up, God will say, go, 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 go. Infiltrate, infiltrate, infiltrate. Let me tell you, this was another shake-up. This was another shake-up. This was another shake-up. And there is an advantage for the church. And we are taking that advantage. The peace that the leaders could not bring, the church will bring it. And I'm telling you, it will start from the communities and it will spread to the nation. Mark my words, you will see it happen. This is our chance. Next verse. Now this phrase, once and for all, clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaken. That is the old order. So only what is unshakable will remain. Next verse. Since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom. I like that. We are receiving our rights. That means, look, this kingdom is coming whether we like it or not. But God is giving you rights in this kingdom. The rights that people are saying, we have our rights, our fundamental human rights. He is giving you rights in a kingdom. A kingdom that cannot be shaken. A kingdom of power. A kingdom of influence. A kingdom that makes great. Its inhabitants. He's giving you rights. That means you too will be able to declare with power and say things happen. That means you don't need to beg anybody for anything. Because you have an inheritance among the saints. That means that every one of us were part of the commonwealth of this kingdom. It is called commonwealth because it is shared amongst everybody. Since we're receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom, we should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender, filled with awe. Hallelujah. For our God is a holy devouring fire. What is he devouring? He's consuming and devouring those systems. And he's giving you a stake in this thing. And let me tell you, in closing, check in history, in the scriptures. Notice that God always tied moves to men, not to himself. It was God that sent the flood. He told Noah, I will send the flood and destroy the earth. In Isaiah 54, he says, the flood of Noah. Was it Noah's flood? Was it Noah that brought the flood? But because a man stooped as the portal for God to enter, God named the move after him. Read through scriptures. The sword of Gideon. Gideon was timid, yet he says the sword of Gideon. Why? Because Gideon stood as the portal for God to flow in. Great moves have always been named after men that allowed God to walk through them. I'm saying to you that there are great moves of God on the earth yes, at the verge of happening. And God is waiting for you, you, you. And those moves will be named after you. Yeah. I said those moves will be named after you. Yeah. And that's how God makes your name great. Because he will commit something that you could never have accomplished on your own, in your own strength. And then it will flow through you by grace. And then everybody will see him. He was the one. She was the one. They were the ones. God is committing moves to you. Moves are going to be named after you. I said moves are going to be named after you. In the name of Jesus. Moves are going to be named after you. He looked for a city. He looked for a city. Hallelujah. I will make you a nation in an already existing nation. Keep your eyes open for that city. It is the kingdom of God dropping on the earth. Established on the earth. It is its systems influencing the systems. We are not victims. 
We are not victims. I've said to you before, you, I have been saying this thing for years. You will remember. I said people should finish school and join the police force. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been saying this thing for years. Many of you here have heard me say this thing again and again. I said finish school and join the police force. And uh, the police, eh? <laughs> me, you got job police, of all police, police. But it's the police that brought you to your knees. Finish school, join police force. Yes, sir. What I'm saying is you go to school, get a degree after four years, go for youth service, and then enter police force. Trust me, you will not start from low one, low constable position. Uh -uh. Huh? You start from two stars? Okay. You heard that? Why not? Why not? Instead of, instead of complaining, why don't we go into the system and change it? Why are we complaining? Why are we complaining when you are there? Why are we complaining when you are here? Go into the system and change it. Go into the system and change it. Hallelujah. Go into the system and change it. Why are you not in politics? Why are you not in politics? You know so much, and you're complaining, yet you're not a, a registered member of a party. You're not a card-holding member of a party. Yeah, Pastor, which party should I join? Kai. Hi. If you know who you are, you will not be asking which party should you join. You will join a party. Because God is making you great and giving you influence and making you a nation in a nation. It doesn't matter the party you join. It doesn't matter. Ah, pastor, what if some of us join this party, some of us join this party? Then one now wins. We are now in the opposition. Through your influence, you will now have what we call bipartisan politics. That for the first time, two opposing parties can work together for the good of the nation. Because it will always be. That's the reason why when they fight to get into power, they fight to make sure that their party wins all the seats. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. Why? So that nobody, will, you, know, you know how difficult it is to pass laws when the lawmakers are in the opposition. Because they set out to frustrate you. So that they can, your government, they can call your way a failed government. Then four years time, they say, hey, you see, it's a failure. Now you allow us come in. And that is how the cycle goes on. Because they enter... The other opposition takes the, the seat, they, they frustrate that government too. So there's a cycle of frustration. It keeps going on, it keeps going on. So enter all the political parties. Yes, With this kingdom consciousness, there's no stopping us. But like I said, in the next few weeks, I will unveil the wisdom of God. Or you're not victims. Now they say over 2,000 criminals are on the loose. Some of them were actually there by, some of them were unjustly put there. Some of them have been there for years. We have our brethren who have been going for prison administration. They've been there for years, no offense, and they've not taken them to court. So they're just there languishing. So some of them came out, they're happy. We bless God for their lives. You cannot, there's no way you want to tell that guy that it was not God that fought for him. There's no way you want to convince him. But there are also criminals on the loose. And our amiable governor has given them one week. <laughs> <laughs> if you know any of them <laughs> tell them what the governor has said I don't know how that's going to happen I don't know I don't know you have to be using spiritual authority to make such a declaration and they will answer you. That's the only one that I know works. 
But what I know is that those criminals on the loose have been given into our hands. The city is taken. They will hear this gospel and they will be born again. Oh, I see a revival brewing. I see a revival brewing. I see a revival. And it's by our hands. When we say hashtag the city is taken, that is a stronger hashtag. City is taken. The gospel prevails. Jesus is exalted. Rise on your feet. Oh, Jesus.